welcome to our uh, next episode of our Over the Limit podcast. Um, today we will have our third guest, someone we've been looking forward to since a long time. Um, it might be a longer episode, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure we will have plenty of great stories. Welcome, uh, Mr. Vosse. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks to both of you. It's a nice, um, it's a nice invitation, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Are you nervous or? It's fine? No, I'm okay. I'm yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it comes towards the end. Who knows? Just a heads up. <laughs> so we will talk a bit about about your career as your as a driver, your career as a team boss, and then we will get to the spicy stuff where we uh, gathered some information about people which name we will not say. Uh, but some <laughs> stories you've encountered in the past. So. <laughs> Our goal is to try and keep it around an hour, but uh, we might exceed it, but I hope it will be fun. So everybody knows you as a, nowadays um, as the team boss of the very successful WRT, but obviously you also raced a lot yourself. Um, can you explain those who only know you as a team boss or mostly as a team boss in a short way the, the racing driver career you had? Yeah, well, <clears throat> obviously... Um my career was uh, uh, running for 18 years. I started in uh, 92 in the um, British Formula 4 Championship. And um, yeah, I, have, I had a quite a strange uh, start of a career because I really never did uh, karting in a very professional way. Or well, I did not do karting in any professional way. I just uh, did few races. <clears throat> but then I had the chance to... Um, to test a, a formula car and I really enjoy it and I said well if I am already 18 so uh, if I have to start uh, if I have to jump I have to do it now so uh, I went to I went to England um, to do another test and then uh, to choose a team there in Formula Ford which was at those time um, a very competitive uh, championship and uh, that was my first year, which was 92. And then uh, I, did a, I did a second year, let's say, with a bit more of uh, ambitions. And, um, and then I did the Benelux Formula 4 Championship. Um, I had some sponsors. Uh, I was followed by Marlboro at the time. They, they had this Marlboro Pro Formula thing. And, um, yeah, I, I finished second in a championship behind Jeffrey Horian, who was um, <clears throat> another Belgian in front of Tom Coronel, who was my teammate. And uh, and yeah, this is where my career start, I would say. And I really enjoyed uh, driving those cars, and but I had one goal. My goal was to, to participate uh, to the Spa 24 hours and <clears throat> also to Le Mans 24 hours. I was crazy about those prototypes uh, driving in Le Mans, and uh, that's, that was always my, my, my goal. Yeah. Finishing second uh, in the Benelux Championship, did also the Formula Ford Festival, which was at that time, let's say, uh, kind of a Macau or a, a Zandvoort. Uh, that was Formula the highest 3. thing. Yeah, it was the season. highest. Yeah, and um, I, I finished fifth there uh, in my first attempt in '93, and uh, the year after I did the British uh, Formula Ford Championship again, and uh, for the works uh, Dukam's uh, Van Diemen team. And yeah, it was uh, finishing um, fourth in the in the British uh, Formula Ford Championship, finishing third in the Formula Ford Festival. But then it was the 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 start of a bad era, which was the the cigarettes uh, ban. Uh, so um, yeah, yeah. Well, it was starting. It was not completely banned, but it was starting. And uh, so we lost uh, Marlboro. So. Marlboro was always helping the the, the best Belgian mm -hmm. uh, who, who was in that category. And um, so losing Marlboro, I said to myself, well, let's go straight into what I really want to do, which was a uh, touring car to be able to do Spa 24 hours, which was hopefully a prototype to do one day uh, Le Mans. So yeah, then I started a touring car career um, in quite a nice way. I... Um, I did the Belgian Touring Car Championship with an Audi, 
So that mm. was my first uh, meeting with people from Audi, and uh, mainly Dr. Rick uh, was uh, was there sometimes, but not only him. Uh, Jai G. Malvoy, which we all know mm -hmm. very mm. well. Um, and um, yeah, he, he, he and uh, Franz Dubois at the time, they chose to have me as a second driver uh, next to the, the top car, I would say, with Philip Adams. And uh, <clears throat> at the end of the year, well, first of all, I achieved my first goal was to do Spa 24 hours. So we did Spa uh, with uh, that OD80 super touring car. And uh, unfortunately, we blew up the engine 10 minutes before the end. So that was, uh, we were uh, fourth overall and the uh, engine went a uh, few minutes from the end, which <coughs> was uh, not very legal at the time, but uh, still not being legal today. Uh, I've been pushed by my teammate to cross the line. So if you look in the book, we, we still finished seven, oh, yeah? uh, but we were pushed for one lap by uh, one lap. sister car, which was uh, Christian Apt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's uh, that was a strange way to finish Spa 24 hours, being pushed by his teammate through the line. And um, but didn't he also had to give up his? He was fighting for a podium, no? Or or was this another year? No, no. Christian was um, well. He he was there, and you know his his brother yeah. Jürgen <laughs> Hans Jürgen was also there, telling him a little bit what to do. And um, <clears throat> they 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 decide first to cross their own line before to do an extra lap and pushing ah, okay. ah. me through the line. Ah. So that was, a, that was the story behind. But it's a good, uh, it's a good memory and it was a good, a good start of, uh, I think I did 15 times Spa 24 hours in uh, probably 15 times in a, competitive, uh, okay. in a competitive car or mainly uh, most of all of my... Uh, attempt in Spa where in quite competitive cars. So that was a good start. And then you also went to Le Mans, right? Went to Le Mans, that was a year later. Um, so here Spa, we are talking about 95. I did my first Le Mans in 99 okay. uh, with Porsche, uh, with a Rook Porsche. And um, yeah, that was a, a great, uh, great memory. I mean, it was the last year of the, you know, the, you know, the big, the big bump mm -hmm. uh, after the second chicane <clears throat> and uh, that's the year where the, the Porsche those grey car mm -hmm. you know were um, attempting Weber. to to flip uh -huh. yeah and um, that was 99 so I did my first Le Mans and then I did Le Mans a few more times later uh, with also some great memories some great cars and I really enjoy it and uh, yeah then f I, I did uh more in my career, but uh, I let you go on with <laughs> the question. <laughs> Otherwise, it might be a bit long. Well, as you said, uh, you did Le Mans, Spa, uh, Zolder probably as well. Um, but your well, uh, after some uh, research, uh, the career highlights for you, I guess, were uh, 24 hours of Spa, and I don't know if it's true, uh, the 25 hours of Cecilia. <laughs> Wikipedia said you also won the 24 hours of Cecilia. Uh, <laughs> I don't know when you did this, but... <laughs> uh, actually, I, I won it twice. It's, okay. It was a race. It was a race, and uh, trust me or not, um, <laughs> I was fighting against uh, Felipe Massa, which was in, uh, the works, uh? Uh, in the works Alfa Meo. I was in a private uh, BMW with two, two brothers, and... Um, I had a great uh, time uh, with the uh, Austrian team, which was named Düller Motorsport. And uh, they were always calling me so for some uh, crazy races. And that was one of them. <laughs> and um, that's also where I met and I, I did many, many races with Dieter Quester, which was a legend at the time of, of touring cars and... and um, And uh, that's where I race also with uh, those uh, Red Bull cars with Toto Wolf and uh, Philip oh. Peter and uh, so it was quite a big race Quester. actually. Then. Yeah, actually. Yeah, 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 it was. A, well, it was not a big race. It was a, <clears throat> it was a, a very special race. But there, there were some cars, and uh, it was a very difficult. You know, at the end, any 24-hour race, it's a, it's a difficult, uh, it's a difficult race. Mm. Um, winning. 
you know, uh, winning 24 hours of Zolder or winning 24 hours of Sicilia or winning Le Mans or Spa. At the end, you have to avoid, you know, you, you have less of those now, but uh, technical issues. I mean, uh, at the time, you had to look for your car. Yes. And uh, that was a different way to, to go into a 24-hour race. And, um, yeah, well, winning at the end uh, twice this uh, Sicilian <laughs> race was a bit crazy. But uh, when I go back to Sicily... Um, you still remember it? Uh, yeah, well, all when day still remember of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the highlight for you must have been Spa, I guess. <laughs> As it is a race you dreamed of doing. Yeah, of course. Um, of course, uh, being in Spa, uh, being in a winning combination, being with, at the time, one of the best team, Larbre Competition, uh, with Sebastian Bourdet, David okay. Terrien, and Christophe Bouchu. Mm. Uh, it was, well, I have also some stories there, but uh, <laughs> I will keep it. Um, but, um, yeah, winning Spa was... Uh, an incredible achievement for me. I mean, it was my, obviously my dream. Um, I was in a very competitive car the year before, uh, but we had some braking issue and then we had a gearbox issue, I believe. So fi finished fourth. Um, and then, yeah, being in that number one car from L'Arbre and uh, winning the race was, uh, was a, yeah, for me it was a great feeling. Um, yeah, but also sometimes, you know, you are winning race in a different way, less important race, but um, that make you feel even better. I mean, I, I feel great about the one in Spa, but uh, it's not the only one. <laughs> You've also, and I've found this as I knew you because you told me, but I always look at this era of, of, of cars as, as amazing. And I think you have the chance of almost driving all of the great cars like the Ferrari 550, Maserati MC12, the Corvette, Lister Storm, Viper. Which was your favorite? Well, it's, um, <clears throat> it's a very difficult question. I, of course, I achieved a lot in my career with, with Vipers. I did many years, or um, I mean, almost four years being a specialist of, uh, of, the, of the Vipers. So that was... Um, that was a great, uh, a great time, a great car, uh, but it was looking more like a bus than a racing car. So, but it's, it was bestial. It was, um, it was uh, the noise, the yeah. way to drive that car, uh, the way that car behave, uh, especially in the wet, was a, was a nice car to drive. Um, was it also not super warm and hot? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was crazy warm. Um, yeah. I saw many drivers collapsing, getting out of the car, collapsing. I remember My doing... Our dad once. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I remember doing um, those races in, in Miami, in, in uh, Suzuka also, where it was crazy hot. And uh, they, they used to put little swimming pool behind the box so we could jump straight into the pool. Um, it was really, really, really hot. And um, <clears throat> they were great cars. Um, they were also h pad gearbox you know like you had to do i mean a bit they, more work <laughs> yeah a bit more work a bit more um a bit more precise i have to say i mean uh, no mistakes there i mean uh, you have to be sure that to be in the right uh, <laughs> right gear to be in the right gear so but um i, I remember that um doing the 24 hours of zolder with one of those cars um we tried to shift only three times to use only three gear yeah. Yeah. to do a the whole, the whole uh, lap, and uh, we were trying to save fuel, and uh, we 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 tried to only do a well to do the lap with using three gears, which was crazy. I mean, the car has so much torque. Uh -huh. But the, um, probably the most iconic car that I would I, I have drove was the Maserati MC12, the Vitaphone car, um, with a great team, and that team gave me a lot of ideas for the for the future WRT. Mm -hmm. um, that was really a, a very, very special car, the, the environment, the car itself. Um, the noise, I would say, the 550, the Ferrari 550 was the best ever noise. Um, winning the um, ELMS um, Le Mans series with the Aston Martin GT1, uh, with Pedro and Gabriele Gardel. 
uh, was also <clears throat> a very special car. I did not really enjoy to drive that car, but the car was special. Um, one car I really enjoyed to drive was the Corvette. The Corvette was a, yeah. such a nice car to drive. Um, I drove also the Saline. Um, you drove all of them, actually. <laughs> well, all of those GT1 of, yeah. the, of that time. The, the only one I did not drive, I think, was the Lamborghini. That's the only car, which I drove in GT3, but not in... Uh, yeah. But not in GT one time. I would also like to drive those cars. One yeah, day. I drove I the ninety eight, uh, the ninety eight GT one from Porsche, a couple, uh, two yeah. times actually, and that was already really cool. But all those like Lister Storm, the Maserati, and yeah. especially the Maserati, I think, because yeah. uh, Andrea Bertolini, I think uh, you, mm -hmm. you race with him. Um, I know him through uh, Louis Machiel, a friend of mine. Um, he said that uh, the traction control on that car was. Even still today, and you know, this was a few years ago that it was for him the best that that, that he ever drove with. Yeah, well, that that traction control was banned um, <laughs> after a few years because that was coming straight from Formula One time, and uh, it was a traction control which was not just a traction control; it was much more developed than that. And that, as you said, it was the best ever traction control I had a. Ever had? I mean, we were doing all the setup of the car with with the traction control. Oh, yeah? I mean, yeah, it was well, that car was coming from another world. But um, yeah, the the I had good memories also with the five seventy five because that was the let's say the real Ferrari. The five fifty was built by ProDrive, and it was, I think, we can say it, still say today it was the best of the two. But uh, I had good time with the five seventy five. Um, becoming i mean coming second to spa leading most of the race and we had an issue at the end of the race and we we have to settle for second uh with uh, mika salo which was coming again straight from formula one to a 24-hour race i think for him it was not an easy one but i think we all we all enjoy and uh we had, we had good time yeah mm. um compare your feeling or your experience you of course did both or doing both or did both um you raced as a as a racing driver but you're also now a team owner so what is your experience what do you prefer the most or what do you ref reflect uh yeah refer back to as the best moments i mean <clears throat> you know when you are driving you are you are sitting there alone in your car you you are having this great feeling uh, achieving something uh, when you do it uh, as a team I mean I'm not the only one uh, I mean when you achieve something when you achieve something with a group of people it, it gives at least uh, the same feeling that you really do something you know when you when you are thinking as a driver you you don't think very uh, long time in front, you know, like you, you don't think, okay, uh, next year, this is how I'm going to do it. This is all, all those little details that you are thinking of. As a team, we take note of it and we try to put, to improve every time. I mean, Lawrence has been part of or almost or first uh, 24 hours. I mean, he came the year after. Um, but <clears throat> I can say that the team has improved from year after year, every little detail. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you really enjoy, that you are able to, you know, you are not always able to improve as a driver, but uh, you are able to improve as a team. And this is almost no limit. There no. is almost no limit into it. And um, this is uh, sp a special feeling. I mean, I'm, I enjoy both. Obviously, I've been a much better um, team boss than... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> than a, a driver. I mean, as a driver, I did what I did with the... It was a different era um, where driving was very different. Uh, my uh, skill of, of uh, setting a car and, and uh, working with the team was not really... was not the best, just simply because I never did karting. I, I just came from... And I just enjoyed uh, what I was doing. Just enjoying to be in uh, such a good environment, uh, in such good team sometimes, and uh, to do what I love to do, and I really enjoy. And I did not work hard for it. I just I was a bit uh, like Dries. 
Yeah, but, but the problem, I was not as quick as Dries, okay. so uh, <laughs> I, have, I had to work a minimum, you know, like uh, I had at least to have one eye open. Um, no, but yeah, but I, I I enjoy as a as a driver. Um, if you had to uh, choose, are you more proud of your achievements as a team or a driver? More as a team, because I would say it doesn't stop. There is no limit. Uh, as a driver, you are at one stage you are limited, and if you are not a good, if you are not a good driver, you will probably not become a good driver. If you are not True. a good team boss, you you can improve it, and you can uh, you can uh, have better people around you who will support you, who will help you, and um, yeah, that's um, the life of a team is uh, is is very different. And when you say no limits, what is the ultimate no limit dream of you then with WRT? Um, I would say, you know, it's very difficult to compare because here we are talking about Formula One. But um, when you are thinking about those years um, between um, Hamilton and Mercedes, or when you are talking about those years between Shumi and Ferrari, this osmos, this um, this feeling that uh, they have prepared everything to the very little last hmm. detail. Um, it's for me uh, a target that, you know, everything can happen. There is always a way to get out of it. Yeah. And when you are reaching that, uh, that situation, well, you, you feel like, wow, uh, we just, as a group, we just achieve things. Yeah, yeah. I just, I think it's for a team the best feeling or thing you can ever. Well, I would, I would say from for me now, from the outside judging, that's kind of also where WRT is at the moment. It doesn't really matter where you start or what race you <coughs> do, you end up but dominating it, it pretty much. If you I look at the wake of LMP2 or GT3 or. Yeah, but I think because well, you are from seeing it from the outside, for I'm seeing it from the inside, and I think it's just also the way, like Vincent said, the the way that you said that you want to have everything in every detail prepared. This is what you are trying, and then what everybody in the team is also trying. Again, sometimes it can, uh, you know, when out of ten things, uh, eight things are perfect, and those two things to, can always be improved. But at the moment, this is I think why it's always looking like, um, you know, for sure every, everything goes very well and it's always lo everything what, what we try or what you try uh, works, but I think it's also the reason why. You know, we, uh, we did a lot of things uh, to, to improve at the time where, uh, you know, I will always remember uh, being in uh, Spa 24 hours for the first time as a works team for Odi. And um, having Phoenix, which was our reference next to us. And um, I remember they did not practice during the week. They did not practice any pit stop. And um, during the race, uh, they, did, uh, this, uh, they did this first pit stop. And we were leading the race and they, they were just behind us. And so we arrived at the same time in, in the box. And on my, uh, on my left, I had uh, Dr. Ulrich. And next to Dr. Ulrich was Ernst Moser from, from Phoenix. And I remember the Phoenix car leaving the box like five seconds in front of us where we, we had a two seconds lead before coming to the box. And I had this, wow, oh, this is going to be difficult. And uh, we, we, did everything to, uh, we did everything to improve our pit stop and to, to make it quick. But uh, the level of, uh, that Phoenix had that, at that time was uh, like incredible. And... We still won the race because we find a better way to change paths. I mean, uh, thanks to René Verbist at the time, who, who uh, him and a few guys from the team has made a tool to to change the to change the brakes, the paths uh, in a quicker way. And because of that, and because of uh, at the time Matthias Ekström, I remember having a, an incredible stint in, on slicks during the night, which gave us the lead, and um, we never lost it again and uh, yeah we won the race from there I thought okay uh, this will never happen again so we we will start uh, we will start building uh, our own um, 
test car to do pit stop. And that's what we did. Uh, I remember to give a call to the workshop and to say, okay, let's, let's put this together. And we built the first car, which was called Eleonore. And uh, we start testing on that car and improving and improving. And we improve in every aspect, not only the wheel change, but also the brakes and, uh, and then the refueling. Now, with all the rules that uh, SRO has fine uh, to slow us down uh, in the pit stop, uh, to not give uh, such a good advantage to the team which are working harder. Um, but this was well, mostly done to stop WRT because I remember in, in, in 2013-14, we in sprint, we were five seconds quicker than everybody in, in the pit stop. Uh, even even until yeah, the last year or two years ago. Yeah, but uh, we won again this year the pit stop challenge thanks to the thanks to our guys which are working very hard every day. Mm. Uh, but those guys who are doing the pit stop, they have changed from year year after year. It's not the same mm. people, so it's just the way to train and uh, how much you train and how much you want sure. um, more than more than people. Yeah, because if you okay. When when you started in t thirteen or fourteen, the gap was like five seconds. Now it's well, it, it, they've catched up. But I think, like you said, they've trained in the training every week, and they are just more consistent. They can do it every weekend, maybe while others can maybe do it once or twice during the season. So this shows that just the the training. Yeah, I mean, we 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 try hard, we train hard, um, and it's. The atmosphere in the team, which are pushing the, the pushing the guy to train and uh, pushing some new guys to train, and uh, I think it's just the way to go. And um, of course, there have been a lot of different rules. Uh, I don't know if you remember, Lawrence. I think it was with your car in Silverstone. 2016, Silverstone. I uh, spoke uh, about it with Adam a couple uh, weeks ago. They did this. Um, they allow us to refuel in a certain time. Uh, but then it was, I think, if if we were under that time, yeah. that was not count as a refueling. And uh, we, we, Adam, which was one of the engineers at the time, which is your engineer today or was your engineer in the past. Yeah, you um, will be my engineer again. Okay, well. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, Adam... Um, has find this this strategy to to pit the car and no one could believe that we we could achieve it and we we pit under the time of which was allowed i mm. mean uh, and uh, we came from i don't know 20 24 to to being in the lead of the race by 10 seconds or something. <laughs> yeah and um, that feeling you know you ask me sometimes and i think i don't think we won the race i think we we, we finished, finished second. second yeah um and that race couldn't overtake the Merck, but finished second. Were we on the same car then? Yeah, it was the oh, year okay. we drove together. You couldn't overtake him in the last hour, but just the detail. Yeah, you yeah. can continue. After the, yeah, uh, continue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you ask me, feeling, you know, that day I was more proud about the team yeah. than about some wins, mm. and uh, the way they have worked against not against the regulation, but to find solutions. Um, we know we were not competitive. We, we, we were really off the pace, I think, that race. And uh, I mean, to find this, this thing and to, to try, and not only to try, he knows it, it was going to work. So that was a, that was a special, that was a very special race for, mm -hmm. for me. I mean, a race that I will not forget. Yeah, I will also remember that because it was my stint um pick three drivers um for 20 hours of Le Mans without us two if you had a free for all card you mean in a in a gt car or in a prototype huh. well Lawrence lost some weight so probably you can now choose oh no you're not in the, the, the thing, never mind yeah um, the, a prototype gt about well, nowadays doesn't matter the car, or is the difference for you? <clears throat> well, I think there is still. Um, well, it depends. You know, it it depends how much you spend time in the car. I yeah, think true. it's not to jump. And I said this quite often uh, today. 
to jump from one car to another car, to from a GT to an LMP, but especially from an LMP to a GT car. Yeah. When you have to face guys like your younger brother, which is uh, Sleeping doing in a GT car. <laughs> 25, 25 weekend in the same car with the same tires, it really became an expert sure. of one of those cars. And to, you, you can be the best, you can be one of the best or the best in the world. To come into to come into this, and to beat those young guys, um, which spend so much time in the car, it's it's very very difficult. So if you ask me, um, and it can be drivers from 20 years ago, from today, from oh, yeah, well, that makes it even uh, more your all star yeah. lineup for to go for overall victory in Le Mans. Okay, I will not make my life too. Uh, too easy um, in, ter in terms of uh, management, I think, but <laughs> I would go for Robin Frains, Rene Rust, Tom Christensen. Okay. Uh -huh. Interesting. All right. Could be worse, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah worse. Are, I think they are worse lineups. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So now I think it's time for some uh, stories <laughs> or mix about uh, questions and stories. Well, I just want to, because I'm thinking now about my uh, trio. And, uh, you want to change somebody? No, I don't want to change somebody. You want to change but, uh, <laughs> No, 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 obviously not. Um, but uh, um, if you look at my uh, heroes from my old days, I mean, you cannot be Belgian and not having Jackie X as a, as a hero. True. But uh, then we come back a bit... Um, too early. You I put him as a reserve driver. <laughs> no, it's. Um, he's doing the fuel. He's putting no, the fuel in the he, car. He's, um, <laughs> he's someone, you know, he create uh, or he create or he gives another life to endurance racing. Um, he's one of those guys who were very young uh, coming into endurance, doing Formula One at the same time. And uh, he was one of those guys, which was, which were incredible, uh, doing incredible stuff, incredible stories about him. Yeah. I mean, we can spend a full hour telling stories about what Jackie did in cars. And uh, yeah, someone very special to me. It would be a dream to have him here one day. It would be yeah. because the stories he's able to tell. I mean, we were in Doha a couple of weeks ago. Uh, at the table with him together at dinner, and it's when he tells a story, everybody's just yeah. like doesn't speak a word yeah. and, and and listens and don't even. It's like from a movie. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Everybody yeah, it shows is. a lot of respect. Yeah. For yeah. It is. It is uh, like you would like to do a movie. You have to do a movie about what Jack Hicks has yeah. achieved. I mean, it's just a. It it looks like a cartoon. It looks like <laughs> unreal. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe one day we can sit here again, but yeah. The first story question comes from me. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the, a lot of people kind of now know it and we, we laugh about it, but the year where actually the trophy behind you, we won the 12 hour, 24 hours of Spa 2014. There was a bit of uh, drama the evening before the race starts. Maybe you, you can... Uh. Tell your perspective. <laughs> uh, we actually spent Le Mans this year laughing about it with uh, with the other person involved. <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> I mean, we we all know that uh, at the time um, we WRT had the chance to have two incredible drivers, more than two, but uh, two which were um, there as a superstar i would say it was you in the car and it was rene rust and um, of course you had two very different character uh, of course oh, really? you <laughs> of course you were both fighting for your career it was still at the beginning of your endurance or <coughs> touring car or mm -hmm. gt or prototype career and it was the same for Rene. And um, I remember in 2013, uh, you, you had some uh, very difficult time to fight Rene. And mm. um, in 2014, it, it swapped a little bit to the other side in terms of uh, qualifying. I mean, it's why and how and all of this, yeah. uh, who cares? But uh, deciding to put the two of you in the same car 
and having having a winky to uh, to glue or to try to glue you uh, was a challenge. And um, uh, Flo, my wife at the time, she was she was pregnant and she was uh, a little True. bit at the end of it. <laughs> and uh, she spent the Wednesday with the kids uh, in the parade and everything was fine. It was for two weeks later. And um, yeah, you know how much we worked during this week of uh, Spa 24 hours and uh, I let my phone a bit uh, there and there and uh, I ran out of battery. And uh, we were discussing, uh, we were discussing having the last, uh, the last briefing and um, we kind of uh, decide who will do what. And I did this with uh, Adam, your engineer, and he called me. That was on the Thursday evening. So my my wife gave birth on the on the Wednesday evening, which I I, I came just a bit too late, um, <coughs> driving out of Spa. Um, <laughs> and the next day, I remember leaving after uh, qualifying at midnight and uh, being on the road to go and see my my little boy Sam and. Uh, Adam called me at, I don't know, it was one probably. I was already halfway down the road. And uh, Adam called me and said, ah, can you come back? Uh, there is some issue. I mean, uh, Lawrence uh, doesn't want to take the start if he doesn't do quali or Rene doesn't want. One of the two, I don't remember. And at the end, it's not so important. The important thing was that um, both of you, you were fighting a bit to be the, to be the one. And... Um, it was some somehow it was not fun at the time. It's very fun to talk about it now, and I think uh, you, me, and Rene we laugh about it in Le Mans this year. But um, at the time, I really took this as an offense to the team, and um, and I took both of you. I think we had a good discussion. I came back. I was not in a very good mood, if you can remember. I came back, I talked both of you, we had a very short discussion, it was short, I don't know if you remember, yeah. but very short. It was a short discussion and um, I left and at the end, I think you did a uh, super poll, uh, you put the count poll, um, you took the start and uh, you led the race and you had a bit of a issue by the end of the race. It and was a bit sick in the night. Or? Yeah, and... Um, I talked to Rene and I, I said to Rene, well, I told you, uh, you will be, you all important to win this yeah. race and you are all equally important as Winky was yeah. important in the, in the lineup. I mean, can you imagine that it, instead of Winky, it would have been Robin? <laughs> of course, we would have been into uh, some other trouble. So at the end, <clears throat> it is very important to have always, you know, the nice combination, it's not always the quickest. It's the, it's the nice combination with, you know, I, al I always take example in what I've seen in the past. And uh, you all know what I think, or you, Lawrence, you know, uh, Dries was a bit too young. But uh, Lotterer, Fassler, Trevillier, yeah. they were an example of what, is ha what has to be a lineup, what yeah. is to be a team. And... Um, I could not reach that with the three of you, but we come to a point where we won the race. We won the race with seven seconds from the BMW yep. of EDS that year. And uh, it gave us a special feeling. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe because you were sick by the end of the race, uh, it gave you a different feeling. But to us, what we have done, I don't know if you remember, we had some refueling issue, so we had to uh, lap much faster to, to recover from it. And uh, Rene did at the end the last two and a half hour. Yeah. He was pushing like crazy. We overtook the BMW, I think, 15 minutes from the end. Mm -hmm. We won the race with seven seconds. That was the starting point where when Rene came out of the car, and it happened to you after, but uh, when Rene came out of the car, Dr. Rick uh, grabbed him and said, okay, well, let's be in the car next week. And, um, you know, everyone has those special moments. I remember many special moments with you, Lawrence, many special moments with Dries. Luckily, they are two brothers, and uh, they, you only did one season, uh, two seasons in the same team. Uh, one no, year, one. one year on the same car, 
No, you left in six after sixteen, no? And that was only that season. Yeah, thing. only only yeah. sixteen, I think. Uh, you did uh, only sixteen, where Dries was, was still young, still very <laughs> young. Well, he's still young. Huh? <laughs> well, it was a difficult uh, start. Rusty. But the story with Rust now, when I look back at it, I'm also like from yeah, you were. It was my second, I think second time, second or third time in 24 hours of spa. So I was still young. And like you said, a lot of ego and didn't understand the, the team player story. And I think René was probably, if you speak it now, nowadays, the same. And we're thinking about ourselves a bit too much. But now we laugh about it. But at that time, I think René and me, we were not but best friends. I, I <laughs> Yeah, I agree that, that you both probably... I don't know, you, maybe you have to tell me if I'm wrong, if I ever had this. Because actually, as soon as I went into GT racing, I actually, okay, yeah, maybe it's because everybody t- uh, says I don't care or I, it looks like I don't care. But yeah, I don't know if, if I ever had a rivalry, rivalry with someone to do qualifying with. I don't know. But do you I remember you today? calling me a couple of two years ago Asking me how to handle a certain yeah, situation yeah. I, with a certain I, I was Italian. Thinking, <laughs> I was thinking about exactly the same one. I remember, as Lauren said, two years ago, I was in the US and I was getting a bit tired. And uh, I could see um, having those two drivers preparing their, seat, their race seat, preparing driver change. And I could see that I could, or we could have quite a very long and difficult race. <laughs> Well, we almost won the race. It was just uh, unfortunate that the <coughs> um, something uh, I don't know, something on the wing. I don't really remember. Well, the question I um, we always wanted to ask. It's the most important question. Um, what is the <laughs> difference between Lawrence and me? Oh. You've both experienced us. You've experienced Lawrence. You are experiencing me still. We've asked this question to everybody in the show, and especially you. you you've experienced both of us. In, not not in terms of who's the quickest, but just in terms of general, yeah, who we are and what we do and what we don't do in Reese's case. Yeah. But you told me that uh, <laughs> you will have some difficult question for me. I, uh, this one is quite easy, actually. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, well, oh. this one is very easy for me. I mean, um, you have two very different character. Um, I would say Dries is a little bit more open. So Dries is a bit more easier sometimes to to handle because... He doesn't think. He does. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just because he he makes his life just a bit easier as he is during (laughs) as he is just as he is he just make his life easier you are working hard for what you do very hard and you try to you you try to look for every detail and where Dries is um, he's pushing a little bit harder the last few years the last two years um He's technically uh, coming to a, a quite a very good level, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, it took it took some years. And um, the speed, I mean, everyone uh, everyone knows uh, the speed of Dries. I mean, it's quite a, it's quite an obvious one. Uh, but um, yeah, if you could ask your parents again to do a, <laughs> a special mix and to do the another one. <laughs> Um, and to combine the two, I think we would have a very, very special driver. <laughs> yeah, this would be. Imagine how it would look. He would. Look. <laughs> Can I get any worse for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah. I remember a certain story with Pascal Vaslo asking you why your driver is standing naked behind you. <laughs> Do you remember this? <laughs> Yeah, and well, actually, he was wearing a couple of clothes of my wife, <laughs> strangely enough. <laughs> yeah, especially the boots. Um, yeah, well, that was a special, uh, spe- <laughs> special evening, uh, special evening of the end of the year party of the team, and 
Yeah, some of the drivers, I don't remember which one, um, had bring some <laughs> bottle of chartreuse, which is not a good alcohol. WRT drink. Um, and uh, which is something very special and it, it, it makes people a bit crazy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I was a bit surprised because it's not like th th there was no one anymore in the party. There was still a lot of people. And uh, I remember to see this little guy. Um, we can <coughs> name him, it's no problem. Mm, well, I think we will wait till the mic is off. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, everyone knows, I mean, this little uh, battery guy. Uh, <laughs> a, a battery, or oh, Duracell uh, yeah, from we Monaco. Call, we, call him, <laughs> we call him Duracell. Uh, <laughs> never stop talking. Uh, always have crazy energy. And th that night he had special uh, energy. I'm not sure about, I don't know what he's taking usually, but it <laughs> did not work with the Chartreuse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hope this was the only one. Okay. No, it was only the beginning. Yeah. Um, so, um, well, there is a story. I don't know the full story. You told me this once, but the, um, um, well, we didn't go to Macau now for two years, but we've been a few times. Lawrence more than I did, but um, apparently there's one story where you missed your flight. Um, where you were running for your, <laughs> running to catch it, but you missed. <laughs> no, the thing is, you know, you have to tell the truth. I mean, the thing is, I am, as you know, as you both know, I'm very well organized. And uh, <laughs> we came back to the hotel, it was very late. And I was the only guy, probably still sober, who had to look. And I could look for the plane and I saw that the plane had a, a six hour delay. So um, when I arrived in the airport and I saw the rest of the team, which was lying down in the, in the lobby, um, they were not looking too good. And I told them, I said, hey guys, you have to do party, but you have to get organized a bit. So you see, I look, I saw that the plane and I, I had four hours of sleep extra. So um, what I'm saying now, it's not true. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> But uh, I, I did not miss my plane. You didn't? I, no, no. I, oh, you didn't? I got it. No, no, I got it. Because the plane was far, far late. But you didn't know that when you went to bed? No, I did not know. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what? You were running for your life out of the hotel, I guess, no? Yes, a bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if, as you know, I'm not running very quickly and very long anymore. But um, I was sweating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember always, um, actually, a huge amount of fun. And, and Jacqueline asked me, when are we going again? Uh, I don't think you ever joined this, uh, the famous Polaris trips. Oh, I did. Oh. I crashed with him. Oh, yeah? What, well, <laughs> yeah. someone crashing every, every time? No, Vincent, he, <laughs> he said, come with me. And uh, we ended up in the ditch in the middle of the night. Did we? Oh, yes. On the snow. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we went to, we go to your place or like, couple of Polaris and we drive until until midnight but um, this famous uh, guy from south of Europe <laughs> Duracell which yeah, you just do, spoke just about just go <laughs> <laughs> there was a story with him uh, catching a bird or do you remember that uh, yeah, yeah yeah well <clears throat> yes I mean of course um it can be Duracell, but at the end, uh, he was, you know... Uh, or was it you? I don't remember. No, 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 no. It was the two of us being together. I was driving uh, this Polaris, and it was early morning. <laughs> and uh, we came back from a nightclub with those little Polaris. We, we had something to get changed. And uh, we came back, and uh, we were driving in the forest at 6 in the morning. And uh, I, ho I had this bird came out of the bush and uh, you know the bird with a big uh it's pecht yeah in Flemish, yeah um and uh this this bird just came into the polaris i just tried to save myself and put my hand there and the bird just came between my fingers so i had this bird in my hand <laughs> <laughs> i was a bit surprised uh, i was you know okay you, you see how quick i'm still is so I wake up, <coughs> Ortelli, so we can say his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I wake up uh, Stefan, who was next to me, and I, I just opened his visor and put this bird into his visor. Like, whoa! <laughs> he was a bit surprised. We call it in French a becasse. Um, uh-huh. But um, so I, I show him the bird, so he knows that I'm not telling him a fake story or show him the bird, and I just let the bird go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had few few nights like that. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it was uh, the, the problem is you cannot do it around here very much. But no, here they they get. We did it once. No, remember that we went no, in the night. We flipped as well. You yeah. remember I installed well, you were that. Driving. I installed the handbrake <laughs> and went to try it the first time. We <laughs> were laying on the side. Oh, yeah, but you also had a couple where you flew out of the window and and. Yeah, once, yeah. Uh, yeah I flew out of the window, yeah. And oh, there's no window. But, uh, uh, yeah, there was a window. It was small. I, I, well, I still sure? do not figure out how I got out <laughs> just of wanted that, to but, ask. Uh, but as you know, I'm quite skinny and um, I don't know. I, but um, I found myself on my foot. Yeah, he, he crashed and flew out of the front and landed on his feet. feet. But 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 <laughs> but the thing was rolling and uh, there was someone with me in the Polaris. It was um, still inside. It was still inside. <laughs> no. But I could see that uh, everything was fine. So uh, good laugh. But there's also another good one with, uh, you know, uh, your friend uh, or our or your friend Eve, um, his cousin uh, Pascal, who <laughs> he flew into a ditch. But no, not a ditch. He flew. Well, he he. How do you say? Yeah, he flew. Uh, yeah, he missed his corner, and uh, <laughs> it was our first tour together. It was around my place in Spa, and uh, we went out, and uh, we lost Pascal. Um, <laughs> So this is official now. Uh, we lost Pascal there. And uh, I mean, his daughter was in the next Polaris just behind. And she saw, you know, she saw in this little driveway, um, she saw the Polaris going and no light, bang. And he rolled uh, five meters under. <laughs> and uh, we just lost him. I mean, uh, and he was laying in a little river there. And... Uh, <laughs> Luckily, he, he can swim. No, but <laughs> uh, we had, you know, uh, it's, it's, important to, uh, it's important to work hard. It's important to do things in the best way and to, to spend so much energy and, and time in your work, but uh, to enjoy sometimes. It's, uh, this was it's for me, important. I had a hard time in the beginning, not accepting, but getting used to this. Because remember at WRT, every race afterwards, we it was not necessarily that we had a party, but we went for a dinner or we had a party or we went to do something all together and, and had an incredible time. And you know as well, if it's Audi, Porsche or, or BMW, a big German brand with the factory team, these things don't yeah, tend to happen. Well. Even if we won a championship, there's nothing <clears throat> really happening and you kind of miss the... The family friends yeah. atmosphere in that way and this was very big at wrt it's it's not that easy to organize always no. you know some drivers um i know a few who like who likes to leave as early as the race end uh some of the drivers uh they have their family with them and sure. they want to go for uh, for dinner and you know it's uh, maybe some mechanics has to leave because we have something the next day it's not it's not always easy but it's uh, of course important and i feel i think we we still do what can be done uh, but uh, yeah you, you you know that it's not so easy to mm. organize the next one i don't know the story but <coughs> it was two people actually who told me as Vincent about this mm. there's apparently a manaka who's missing a finger <laughs> in the cult hotel in Ingolstadt. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, that was just... Um, <laughs> the real story, Evans. Uh, Andre, Andre, Ben and myself, we came back from the uh, Audi finale. And... Uh, the ripping pants Audi finale? No, 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 no. no? Not that night. No, okay. no, no, no. It was another night. Another finale. And, um, yeah, we were three and, you know, sitting behind a table, it's much better to have 
a fourth person and we were feeling a bit lonely <laughs> and uh, we decided to take this um, uh, mannequin which was at the entry of the cult hotel in, in Ingolstadt and um, <clears throat> I have to say, uh, everybody was not very uh, happy about that situation, mm. but but uh, we finally were able to get this mannequin into the e elevator. And uh, <laughs> but the, but uh, when the elevator door closed, uh, closed just and 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 rip off the the finger of the mannequin, and uh, so he became a second Vincent. Um, <laughs> and um, I remember that. Uh, of course, uh, this was not a very clever move. The people from the hotel were not so happy. But uh, we put this mannequin on the front, on the door of uh, Jai G. Malvoy. Um, <laughs> and then we knock on his door. And, uh, and then we, we just <laughs> go into a room. So when he opened his door, <laughs> he had a mannequin falling on him. Um, yeah, this is the story of the mannequin. I'm not sure this is a very clever story, but uh, it's an uh, end of the night uh, story. Okay, I yeah. didn't. I I remember something with uh, with IG in the end, yes, but yeah, yeah. Oh, They're still searching that? for it, or they the mannequin? The, 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 oh, the finger. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to take it for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, uh, that was a uh, well came to an end. All the funny stories. I still have one surprise left. Oh. Um I didn't write it on the script, but. In all my career, as you can see, I've been kind of the peephole. I never gave anybody a helmet, okay, even though everybody just asked me. Peep it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, because I wanted to collect them all and, and have this in, uh, in my room. But I remember Vincent always asking me to get a helmet. And I, I know you told me uh, now, just before and actually a couple of weeks ago, that you built a room like this, but a bit more spectacular. <laughs> So um, by this, you will be the first person and the last. <laughs> <laughs> I will give a helmet. The last. Um, and I will give you my the helmet I first drove with the WRT and where we first run the race in, in Nogaro um, together with Orteli, our first GT race, um, as a present for in your bar. So for the ones. For the one time he gives a helmet. Oof. But there is a hole now. Sorry, very short. Thank you. Did you use those um, aero dynamics? It's obviously with the contract that I wanted back in back. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to say, did you use those aero things in the GT? Did you open the window maybe a bit? No, uh, my new helmet wasn't ready yet, so I had to use that one uh, for the first uh, half of the season. What about yours, uh, Dries? Do you use this aero? <coughs> no, this <Yeah>. is <laughs> this is just a headrest when I <laughs> when my neck gets a bit sore. The best are the drivers who put on tear offs on the helmet in a GT car. Who does this? There's a lot of people doing it. No way. Um, are you scared that the windscreen is gonna fly away? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. never saw anyone do it. Well, also you with your spoiler. It's the I want to be cool. You also have spoilers. No, I don't. Well, that, without a spoiler, you look like a hillbilly. But, um, you know, I, I, maybe not now, but I think in five years, uh, when we do the next uh, podcast, I keep uh, a few stories for myself about the two of you. And um, You can I will bring out one a story if you want. <clears throat> no, no, I will wait. I will wait five more years, you yeah. know, that uh, I am sure I don't, I don't have any low... Uh, court <laughs> uh, over a year yeah so uh, <laughs> I keep it for me but I will I promise I will come back okay that's good that's good at least good. We, hopefully in five years we got a bit well let's see if we first are still doing it in five years it's still it's the plan but yeah. uh, um, I'm still convinced that he uh, can ask it to Vincent you're convinced to convince uh, Valentina Rossi to come on the show of course <laughs> you can try <laughs> Of course, he's my friend. <laughs> yeah, well, I even so played simulator simulator with him uh, two days ago. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, no, he's <laughs> he's 
about my... batters or on batters yeah on and batters. actually i must say he's on the sim well uh, he does a good job um but he was very quick on the sim yeah. so if he can keep that for the real race then he's got a good race coming let's see <laughs> perfect <laughs> so this was the end of this episode um Remember to check on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify, if I'm right. If I'm right. Lauren's looking at me if I'm saying everything right, but I guess I am. <laughs> so uh, far, so good. <laughs> and you can uh, leave a subscri sub subscription, sorry for my English, uh, and some ratings if you like, and then uh, well, give some comments on what can we do better and what not, and then let's see each other in the next one. Not bad. Maybe practice it one more time. Like time yeah, yeah. will be good. Yeah. It's Totra Beach. Yeah. What's that English? Sure. Now, the next guest will be somebody from outside of uh, motorsports. So it will be Tom Bonum. Well, actually, he well, started he's in a the post, now. post cycling motorsport career. So, uh, me as a cyclist fan, it will be interesting to, to ask him some questions. Uh, you, you probably didn't even know he was riding bikes before, but. <laughs> well, I know uh, he, he became world champion, no? Yeah, I did, huh? Yeah. So, uh, so he's, oh, I think he was back. Oh, Paris Roubaix, you won a few times? Four times. I see. One of the most successful Belgian cyclists. So. But this uh, Remco Ivenopoul is coming close, huh? He is now world champion. Yeah, but he's still far from. Yeah, but he's very. Where is Roubaix? <laughs> <laughs> Probably will say in Brazil or. No, it's in France. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. 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 And okay. they go from Paris to yeah Paris Roubaix. Yeah. <laughs> <for that. laughs> okay. He's getting smarter by the years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's end there. That's the that's, uh, that's uh, highlight. <laughs> the Ronde van Vlaanderen, where is this? Yeah, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> okay. okay, I think that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. <laughs>